Hi and welcome to the AppDrag tour. I am Mike Saba and I'll walk you through the various features and functionalities of the AppDrag CMS, Cloud Backend and Newsletter Campaign Manager. On the AppDrag website, you may instantly create an account which will take you to the creation of a new project. This page contains a variety of templates that you may choose from to begin your website. On the left are the categories that they're filtered by. Hovering over them will give you a quick glance and let you know how many pages it contains. Once I select a template, I'm redirected to the page builder where I can start customizing my website. Let's first discover the toolbar. The logo brings us back to the dashboard. This button opens the page builder of any of your projects. The gear opens your current pages configuration. The globe opens the translation module that we'll visit shortly. And the SEO opens the search engine optimization assistant. To the right is your display options for responsiveness. The help button will open the tutorial wizard. Next is your undo, redo, and save, which you can also access using your standard keyboard shortcuts. Preview will open your page in the browser view, and Publish takes your project online and ready for the world to access. Next we're going to see are the controls at the left. The top one opens your page configuration where you can create pages, add and modify menu links, and gain access to the blog and shop departments. The next is where you select components you'd like to add into your page. Then we have some plugins, the translation button, the quick editor to make some simple and quick changes, the asset manager where you control your images, files and fonts. The fonts by the way can either be imported from your source or by searching the Google fonts from here and just hitting install. The last control is the global project configuration where you can access options such as versioning, Google Analytics and your 404 page. This fonts tab gives you control of the default fonts, sizes and colors for the various HTML tags. And the Colors tab is where you can define the color scheme of your project. Now that we've seen the controls, let's get into the builder. AppDrag uses Bootstrap for responsiveness, and that means that the page is split into the parent-child relationship of sections, rows, columns, and elements. Using a bootstrapped code ensures a clean source code and enhances your website's discoverability. Anywhere on the page, you can access those by placing your cursor over the desired area and right-clicking. Similarly, you can click into any of the components and find its individual controls at the bottom. Sections have their controls at the right hand side of the window. Sections and rows have these arrows which will allow you to position them above or under their previous or following sibling. Columns and elements though have the dragging tool that you can grab in order to replace them in their parent. Text elements have this control that will open a text editor tool which you can also achieve by double clicking into it. And the next control is the paintbrush, which will open the editor of styles and functionalities for each of our components. For example, if I would like to change this background image, I'll go into background and click replace image. Here I can upload an image from my computer or open any of these royalty free image banks. AppDrag has also given you access to a multitude of patterns, icons, logos and videos, once again all royalty free. Once I find the image I want, select it and choose a size, then I could add an overlay, an animation or even parallax. The same goes for the rest of the components, so if I want a background for my column, I'll do the same. At the bottom is the padding and margin for all four directions. The elements also feature these little padding handles for ease of access. The duplication tool will give you two options, either to duplicate your component right beside it or to copy it onto the clipboard. This feature is really handy in the event that you want to, for example, paste the block later on the page, on a different page, or even in a different project. And if that section holds fonts that aren't installed in that other project, the copied component will take it along with it. So all you do is find the location where you would like to paste your block, hit the duplication button, and paste. This HTML button is available on every component, and clicking it will give you full access to its source code. Then we have the delete button, which will do what a delete button is meant to do. Now that we know what all the buttons do, let's start building. In the add component section, there are two categories, the elements and the sections. I'm going to add a new section under the our team subcategory, and the way to add is quite simple. You grab the section you choose, drag it where you'd like it, and drop. And if your team is comprised of four members, all you need to do is duplicate the column and replace the content. And in the event that the image doesn't quite fit your container, or if you wish to make some simple changes, there's an embedded image editor which will give you a whole bunch of editing tools such as cropping. Once you save the image, the image is replaced by the new edited one, which by the way can be found in your assets. Next we're going to add is an element. And this differs a bit from the section since you'll need to first locate or create the column in which you would like to add it in. 
So for example, if I want to add a line beneath this one, I'm asked how many columns I'd like the row to be. I'll select three, that way my element can be nice and centered. Then I'll choose my element. So let's add in an image, drag it into my new row, and drop it in the center column. Another way to achieve that would be by letting AppDrag do that for me. So I'll delete this row and drag the image once again. And as you can see, I'm asked if I want to create a line. Once I drop it, a new line is automatically created, but this one only has one column, however. And then again, I could replace the image, but if I choose a vector, the editor this time allows me to change each individual color. And of course, I can then give my icon a background of his own. And you can animate your element super easily just by configuring these right here. Another interesting element that you can add into your page is a source code block. This is ideal if you have a customized piece of code that you would like to insert anywhere on your page, or a plugin from an external website is another example. All you would do is choose the type you wish, and CSS or JavaScript just means that it comes with the style or script tags. I can take the jQuery block, add some HTML and CSS right above it, then place some jQuery in here, and it's ready. In order for me to see what this renders into, I'll preview my page, and there's my custom code. If I click into it, here's my jQuery running successfully. Since the header or footer is repeated on every page, you could drag your block once into one of them, and your code will be read automatically anywhere on your site. Next we have are the plugins, and these range from all sorts of cool features like Calendly, image carousels, tabs, and so on. As an example, I'm going to insert an animated text block, which I can customize just by double-clicking inside. Should you need to translate your website, just hit the translation button, select the current language, add the language you wish to translate to, and click pre-translate. Now, every text block appears with the translated text beside it. Once you look over the text and approve of the translation, you click save and you're done. What's left at this point is adding a translate button somewhere on your page. And to achieve that, add a component, scroll down to translation, choose your selector, and drop it wherever you'd like. Let's preview this real quick, choose the language, and there you go. We have a form right here which will take in the visitor's information and add him to your project's integrated contact list. You can also send an email upon submission containing the sender's information gathered from the form. Once you're ready, you validate, select which field goes with which column, and in this case we only have a name and an email, and once I validate, my form is active. Responsiveness is key in our day and age, and with AppDrag, ensuring that your website is mobile and tablet ready is super simple. Just select the media size and apply your changes. For example, if I want this title tag to look smaller on a mobile, click the text responsive button and select the size you want. Padding and margin sizes will also take effect independently on each device. And if you want this entire section to not be visible on a smartphone, remove the visibility and it's gone. Go back to desktop view, and there it is. In order to achieve good visibility on search engines, your website needs to be optimized. There's an integrated SEO assistant to help you accomplish that. The assistant scans your website and gives you a percentage score according to the guidelines set by the search engine leaders. The left panel gives you all your keywords and phrases, and the right side is where and what you need to fix to climb in the scoreboard. So for example, in my metas, I need some keywords. So I'll grab a few from here, drop them in there, and there's my green check. And as you can see, I gained some points. As long as I run through the list of issues and fix them, I'll make my way up to 100. What we went through until now was all for static sites. And even this form right here only sent an email or saved the contact. How about if you'd like to create dynamic websites? Well, AppDrag has you covered, as it includes a cloud backend where you can create tables and write APIs in various languages such as SQL, Node, Python, and more. If you select Node.js, AppDrag suggests a few examples of commonly used functions, like sending an SMS or generating an email. So I'm going to show you how simple and intuitive Cloud Backend is. We're going to create a simple table called Users, which will contain a few columns. So let's put in a full name, which will be of type text, an email, which will also be of type text, a newsletter, which will be a boolean, and a last update, which will be of type timestamp. Now that our table is set, let's write an add user API using the visual SQL tool. And since we're inserting the user, it's going to be a visual insert. So we get a few options that I won't really get into, but what's important is selecting the table which we will insert into and creating the parameters. 
So those will be full name and we put in an example, email, an example, newsletter, which is a Boolean. So we'll put in a one and that's that. Right below is the mapping of our parameters to the tables column. So the full name will go with full name, the email with email, the newsletter with the newsletter, and the timestamp will be an SQL formula of now. Once all is done, hit try, and as you can see, it's a success. We open our table, and there's our user. So now that our table and API work great, let's integrate them with our front end. In this column, I'm going to add in a few components under cloud backend inputs. I get a whole lot to choose from, but all we need is a name, an email, and a radio. For the radio, I go to values to change the individual values. And now the button. So I'm going to find the button from here and drag it into my form. Double clicking into the button will give me choices of options I have pertaining to this button. So we could add or modify the font awesome icon, change the content, tweak the design, and of course associate it with an action. And that could be a link to a page, an anchor, or a website, and so on. Or it can trigger any of these actions right here. For example, if I want to run some JavaScript, all I need to do is enter the code in here and hit save. But we're going to choose Cloud Backend and enable it. In this dropdown are the APIs associated with my project. Once I select it, I automatically get the parameters that we added in the backend, as well as the sources I just created on my front end. Match each one accordingly. Let's opt for a success message and save. Now let's test our form. So we hit preview, fill it out, click add, and here's our success message. Let's go back to the database, and there's a new user. Another really useful tool that you can find on Cloud Backend is the API documentation. Here's where you'll find all of your APIs with the body inputs and with the auto-generated code for its call in all of these languages. So you can test your API to see what it returns, and then you could copy the code, say in jQuery, and paste it in your front end using a source code block. Let's visit our dashboard real quick and get a glance of the various features available. So the left is where you have your projects, and the right is the domain section where you can purchase any domain with any suffix available. All domains come with a free SSL certification, has full DNS configurability, and can be transferred at any time. Domains purchased on a different platform such as GoDaddy can easily be transferred or forwarded over to AppDrag. Support contains tons of documentation and videos to help you get around, and the code editor is where you'll find the root folder of your project and gain full access to it, including downloading the entire project, uploading files, and editing the code for full developer control. AppDrag saves any changes you make, so if you right-click on your index document, you'll get access to the restore option where you're given all of the versions to select from dating back up to 14 days. Clicking on settings will direct you to the project's dashboard where you can track all of its traffic, usage, and stats. The top toolbar lets you delete it entirely, transfer it over to another AppDrag account, or share it with anyone you'd like. And this option gives you control of which department you're giving access to the shared party. The white label option is a way to really give your business the edge. AppDrag will remove itself entirely from the spotlight and allow you to replace all of its logos, its color scheme, and domain for your logos, your theme, and your personal domain. This is an example of AppDrag being used with the white label. AppDrag has integrated a newsletter campaign manager where you can create beautiful newsletters using the similar tools as the page builder, as well as starting from a pre-made template. Once your newsletter is ready to go, hit send and put in the remaining information such as the sender's name and email and the delivery date and time. Once done, hit next and select the recipients. You can manually add a contact, import a CSV and obtain them via your website's contact form. In the stats section, you can track deliverability of your newsletter with a complete detailed breakdown of the recipient details. I hope you found this tour helpful. Feel free to visit our website support section for more tips, tricks, tutorials and documentation.